Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at a special type of slope. So we're going to look at slope from proportional graphs, which makes it a unit rate. Um, so proportional graphs are just where we go through the origin. We will look at proportional relationships more at the end of this unit. Um, for today, all you need to know is that they create a special type of slope. So we're going to look at how to find slope from those situations, and then we're going to look at other ways that slope can be represented. So let's first review unit rate and a few different ways that we can represent unit rate. So this first one is five, five apples for $3, and we want to um, show some other examples of how this rate can be represented. So first let's find the unit rate, which would be the amount for one apple. So I'm gonna do five, sorry, three divided by five. It's $3 for five apples, and I get 60 cents. So that means that one apple is 60 cents. Um, another easy one I can think off the top of my head is just if we double it, 10 apples for $6. So there's a couple of different ways to represent this rate right here. Okay, next rate is 16 drinks bought for $40. Let's first figure out the price of one, 40 divided by 16 is 250. So that means that one drink cost $2.50. Okay, another rate I can think of is if I half the original rate, it would be eight drinks for $20. So there's just a couple of examples of how we can adjust a rate and it still has the same unit rate. These two things right here still have a unit rate of 250. So not only can they change the rate, but sometimes they will change the way that slope is represented. So yesterday we looked at a fraction doing the rise over the run. That's one way that you can represent slope. We can also represent slope as a decimal. To do that, you will find the rise over the run of the graph and just divide it. And then a verbal description, it's kind of like what we did up above. It is whatever is represented on the y-axis, per the x-axis or rise per run. Okay, so let's look at these graphs here on one and two, and we're gonna find the slope and represent it as a fraction, decimal, and verbal description. Just practice representing it in those different ways. So this first one right here, notice that the x, or I'm sorry, the y-axis is counting by threes. And there's not a line going through the points, but we can tell that it's linear. We will use those points to find the slope. So this graph is representing the number of lunches and the total cost. So let's just start by doing the fraction, the rise per run part. And I'm just gonna use these two points right here. There's my slope triangle. So I can tell on the rise that I go from zero to six. Um, remember my y-axis counting by three, so that is three, six. And then the run is just one. So the fraction here would be six over one, which simplifies to six. That makes the decimal part of this easy. It is also six. Okay, let's talk about how this can verbally be represented, what this actually means. So that six over one means that it is six dollars per one lunch. Another way I could do this, you could pick a point on the graph or you could just um, multiply the rate. I'm going to do both. So if we look at this point right here, it's showing me that five lunches cost $30. Could also just multiply this thing by five. So another verbal representation would be $30 for five lunches. And whenever I do 30 divided by five, I still get that same unit rate of six. 
Okay, let's look at the next one. So this one is talking about the pages read per minute. Um, and the x-axis is the number of minutes and the y-axis is the number of pages. Careful with your scale here. They only marked every other line as three. So that means that the lines in between are another 1.5. So you just have to be really careful when you're doing the rise on this. So let's go ahead and find the fraction or the rise over the run. You can use any two points. All of the line is going through perfect corners. I'm going to use these two points because now I know that this rise is from 0 to 3. So it is 3. And then my run is from 0 to 2, which is 2. So the fraction version of the slope here or the unit rate is 3 over 2. And then the decimal, I'm just going to divide that. And 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. And what that means is, remember, the y-axis, whatever's on the y-axis versus the x-axis. So it means 1.5 pages per minute. So let's write that for our first verbal description, 1.5 pages per minute. Okay, then for my second one, I'm going to use the numbers that were represented in my rise over run, 3 over 2. That means 3 pages every 2 minutes. Okay, so now that we've had a little practice representing slope in different ways, let's see if we can match a unit rate given to a graph. So number three says Brittany babysits for seven hours and earns $105, which has a slope that best represents the average rate that Brittany gets paid per hour. So if I look on these graphs at seven, it's kind of hard to tell which one exactly goes through 105. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the unit rate like we did up here, and then I'm just gonna match my graph to it. So she babysits for seven hours and she earns $105. So I'm going to do 105 divided by seven to figure that out. And 105 divided by seven is 15. So I need another graph that has a slope or rate of 15. So let's go through our graphs and figure out which one has a slope of 15. So here's a perfect corner and here's a perfect corner on this first graph. Um, my rise is from 0 to 30, so the rise is 30. And the run is from 0 to 7, so it is 7. So the slope of this graph would be 30 over 7. I don't think 30 over 7 is going to be 15. It is 4.29, which is definitely not 15. So graph A is not going to work. Okay, graph B, here's a perfect corner. Here's a perfect corner. So the rise of this one is from 0 to 30. So it's 30 and the run is 1. And 30 over 1 is 30. It does not match our slope of 15. Okay, let's look at this one right here. I see it's going through perfect corners for the entire line. I'm going to choose corners that have the numbers marked. So I'm going to use these two right here. So again, the rise is 30 since I go from 0 to 30. And then the run is 2. And 30 divided by 2 is 15. So this is the answer. Let's make sure D. Well, this doesn't make sense because if she's getting paid per hour, that means the line should be increasing. This one obviously has a slope of 0 since it's a horizontal line. That does not match our slope of 15. One thing we can double check. Remember, they told us 7 hours earns $105. We can check that on the graph. $7 
is at a hundred or sorry, seven hours is at a hundred five dollars because a hundred five would be in between ninety and one twenty.